Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by... Southern Indiana Pediatrics, part of IU Health Southern Indiana Physicians. For decades, parents in our community have trusted their children's care to Southern Indiana Pediatrics. Learn more at siphysicians.org. The Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you. Taylor, today's show is about chewing like ice. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yo, what? DJ Stu, let's kick it. I'm back in the zone and chilling. My rhymes are like water because they are spilling out of my mouth into these trays. Then I just chill. Make ice cubes for days. Ice, ice, baby. Ooh. I'm Maddie. And I'm Taylor, and this is going to be a cool show, mm -hmm. Maddie. We've got hockey, what? we've got ice sculptures, wow. and a pineapple, a freezies. Ooh. Are you ready? I'm not just ready, I'm too. Ooh. So let's kick things off with a song off the Friday Zone playlist. Play <laughs> Mr. Weatherman, Mr. Weatherman, we'll show you where to school. Mr. Weatherman, Mr. Weatherman, it's gonna be uncool. 
<laughs> Hello, my name is Sam Bartlett, and I'm going to show you a stunt today from the world of stuntology. This is a great stunt. And I know I always say that, but I really mean it this time. This is the squirting straw maneuver. And it involves some water, scissors, straw, a towel if you're a nice person. Uh, first of all, let's do it. Hey, Mark, come over here. I want to show you something. All right, watch this. This is crazy. Ah, is hey. <laughs> isn't that annoying? Well, I'm going to show you how to make one of these things. Take a straw, take a pair of scissors, cut a small hole in the straw, but don't let anybody know. Then, put it in your pocket, go over to somebody's house. Put your finger over the hole in the straw. So you're just drinking. Hey, watch me drink. There's nothing wrong with a straw. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Then, at the right moment, you're going to suck water into the straw, pinch the straw, Remove your finger from the hole and then blow. Has to happen fast or it won't work because you can't hold water in a straw very easily. So ready? One, two, three. I love this trick. Thank you. We're joined by John from the Bloomington Parks and Rec and Matthew from the Bloomington Blades hockey team. Now we're Love talking about things that are cool today and what isn't cooler than hockey, hockey. am I right? Yeah. It's literally, it's cool out there because it's on cold. ice. Yeah, it's a little cold. Oh. So John, uh, where where, uh, where can kids play hockey? Where, where? Well, Frank Southern Ice Arena in Bloomington is the only indoor ice arena. It's near okay. Bloomington South High School. Okay. Cool. And Matthew, obviously, how long have you been playing hockey? For about four years. Four years? So when did you start? How old were you? Uh, about six or five. Wow, really? You can yeah. start that young? That's great. Um, and, and what got you started in, and why did you want to play hockey? My older brother started it. Oh, uh, the influence of the older brother. Okay, okay, cool. cool. And actually we've got, uh, oh, we have some footage here of, this is at Frank Southern in Bloomington. Um, there's a locker rooms. There it is, Frank Southern. Cool. Oh, cool. So there you guys are getting set up. Is this... Now, is this you? Is this you playing out here? Is this one of your yes. scrimmages? Okay. Cool. What team are you playing against? I am playing against the orange team. The okay. orange team. Matthew's on the blue team here. Okay, okay. And how often do you guys scrimmage? Um, every Tuesday and uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. And, and, and why do you guys scrimmage? What's the... So, because, so we can win games and uh, this comp, I I don't know when, but our tournament's coming up. Okay, what is cool. a scrimmage? I don't even know what a scrimmage is. Well, it's kind of a practice game. But practice uh, game? Yeah, obviously practicing the whole time gets kind of boring. For right. Don't, so it doesn't get a little boring, Matt. It'll practice all the time. <laughs> you want to play some games. Yeah. So he loves love it so much. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, because you guys play, so you take all those drills and you put them on the ice. And actually, speaking of drills, Matthew, Matt, Matthew oh. taught me a few drills. What? And we did a few little moves out on the I ice. Invited? Well, because last time we did the track stuff, they didn't work out so well. But anyways, <laughs> check out Matthew and I on the ice right after this Friday Zone and let's get it. Hey guys, we're here at Indiana Ice Studio and we're gonna check out how a block of ice can turn into a beautiful ice sculpture. Let's check it out. Right now, we are here with Stefan, and we are going to show the first step of this awesome process. So what you're doing here is basically portioning out how your ice is going to fit or how the, the yeah, image this, is going to fit into the yeah, ice. Yeah, this gives me an idea so that I don't just attack the block blindly. I actually know I have a plan as to where I'm, where I'm going to go. Where do you get your ice from? Now you need ice, right? Oh, wow. So this is water right now. Well, this is water and ice. We try to make it crystal clear, and we do that by freezing from the bottom up. And then we've got these pumps in here. The pumps agitate the water, so it just keeps it moving so that it freezes clear. Cool. How cold is this ice water? Well, on the bottom, it's very, very cold, way below freezing. And then on the top, it's you know right around 32 degrees. Can I try? 
You may try, if you dare. If I dare. Oh, wow, it stops right there. Woo! So here so you can see So this is your ice. Yeah, I got a big block of ice yep. here, and I'm going to turn it into... It's, it's going to be, be an ice sculpture. sculpture. So you got your outline. Yeah, I got my outline off. Now I can just take the template off. So... If you need to make some notes on your paper, you can have this paper. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have a pen? <laughs> <laughs> so, Stefan, now that you have your outline done, what, yeah. what do you do now? Well, now I really just need to take everything away that doesn't look like a cornucopia, but uh, I've got that guideline right here. Mm -hmm. So, now I need to make a silhouette. Sculpture is just a, any sculpture is just a process of refining, so we just use smaller and smaller tools and take more and more gradual steps. Very cool. Stefan, so this is our final product. Yep, this is it. This is our cornucopia. Yep. It's beautiful. Thank you. Nice job. In the Friday's home. All right, we're back now. That ice sculpture was pretty cool, but pretty cool. let's take the ice and skate ourselves. Now, Matthew, you showed <laughs> me first, before we even got on the ice, how to put on the gear, right? Yep. Let's check it out. That's a lot of gear. You teach me about this gear. What do I got to put on first? Well, first you start with your shin pads. Why do you need these? So they can protect your shins and your knee. Okay, cool. What are they called? Breezers. Breezers? What are, like giant underwear? Is that what these are? Oh, I'm guessing that you got to wear all this padding because that puck can probably hurt yeah. hitting you. Okay. Just like that? Am I doing this right? Yep. Cool. Okay. Just pull these over like that? Yep. Skates. Okay. I guess those are pretty important. Now, is there a certain way you need to tie them or? Any way you like. And skate two, done. Do your chest protector. Chest protector, we need that. And that's this guy, right? Yep. It's a little different from like football pads. Okay, all pads on? Yep. Jersey? Yep. The jersey on, okay. I'm looking like a hockey player. Uh, what, helmet? Yep. Okay. What's this called on the helmet? Oh, the cage. The cage, just to protect you from any pucks and like that. And you just strap it up on the... Yep. Cool. And gloves? Yes. Cool. All right, we need one more thing to play hockey, Matthew. Sticks. Sticks. Well, you want to go play? Sure. Let's do it. That's a lot of gear you guys have to wear. Now, uh, what, what do you think for you, what, what is the most protective one? Um, I gotta say the chest protector or the or the mat, the, the helmet. Yeah, because that yeah. puck's flying around so fast. Did you just? You, know, you just told me you got hit in practice. Where'd <gasps> okay. you get hit at? Right in the side. And and so oh. the what were those called again? That we put on the pants. The, the breezers. The breezers. So the that, breezers. those come in handy. The breezers mm -hmm. come in handy with pucks flying at you and stuff like that. Um, and obviously the skates. Those are important. You need to just a little bit. Well, yeah, Just a little. you could play in shoes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A little bit slippery. Um, have you ever had a, a puck to the helmet? Yes. Is it scary? It hurt. Yeah, it's still? It's still a little right the in the ear. Yeah, Imagine yeah. without the helmet. Oh, oh I know. I could, yeah. Have you got a puck where your equipment isn't? Like in the stomach or in the... Yeah. That feels good too, puck. doesn't it? Do you guys wear mouth guards? <laughs> Yes. To grab okay. your teeth. Okay, that's good. But I mean, we're talking about a little bit, but I mean, you are very protected out there and it's very fun and you're going out there and, um, and that's kind of part of the sport too, the uh, going out there and, and hitting the ice. Now, along with the gear, the first thing you taught me how to do was to pass, right? So let's check that out. It's always cool. good to know how to pass the puck. Mm. Let's check it out. 
All right, Matthew, teach me how to do a pass. Just like a basic pass with the with the stick and the puck. Just grab the stick. Uh huh. Make sure you get a gr good grip with your stick. Uh huh. Touch on the tape. Slide from one end of the stick to make sure it curves. Where it goes then, all the way up. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty slow at it, but that's all right. Do it again. Or you can put it in the middle to make it a little more straight. Okay. How do you use these drills, the stuff you do in practice in like a game situation? Well, if you practice the drills, you can use them in games. Say, like, you're over here, and somebody's over here, someone's in the center. Pass it up, pa pass back, and you can, like, just keep on doing it until you can make it into a goal. Oh, nice. And then you're using those situations where eventually you may find yourself in a game in that situation, you know how to score. And then we work on passing and stuff like that, and obviously that's important. All right, we got the hang of that. Cool. You did I started, pretty well. Yeah, I started getting the hang of it. I'm now, impressed. okay, Matthew, one thing we didn't get into detail on there was you're talking about the tape on the stick. Why is that important to have? You're talking about with passing. Why is that important? So the puck can get a good grip on the stick so you can make a good pass or oh, shoot. Okay, cool, cool. And then something that we were talking about with John was I was interested. Why is, and I'm, we were wondering this, why yeah. is the ice white? Well, it's white because, you, so you can see the puck on TV or you can see it when you're playing. So, oh, it's, so okay. if you see it on, uh, in a professional game, you'll, it reflects off and, it, and you can see a little black puck. And it's painted. And yeah. it's painted just like you paint a house or whatever. It, it's spray painted is okay, the so easiest way to do it. Okay, so it's not clear like I have no idea. I, yeah, I just always assumed it was always like that. And I guess that is important because then when you're shooting, I mean, that puck's flying around. you got to be able to see it. And right. next, you taught me how to shoot the puck. So let's check that out. All right. Okay, so we just worked on passing. Now we got to work on what? Shooting? Do you have a drill for that? Okay, wh what are we going to do? I stand over here. Okay. Stand over there. And then you just pass back and forth till we get to the goal, then we shoot. Okay, sounds good. Oh! All right, let's try it again. I'm getting fancy. Oh. 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 Hockey's hard, guys. Oh. That was awesome, man. Woo! He's good. They're both good. Now, I'm not the most graceful <laughs> skater. You took a couple of tumbles. Right? I did. I took a few. No. No, that was so fun. Now, so <laughs> we did, we did, <laughs> thanks, Maddie. Mm -hmm. We did passing, we did shooting drills. Uh, why is it so important to work on these drills in practice? So you can learn new things and use them in games. And, and then be the score. winner. And for, and for your scrimmages, and that's what you're working towards. How many games do you guys typically play? within like a hockey season. Do you you'll, know, play, you'll play probably more than 30, 35 games. Whoa. Really? Yeah. And, uh, and and you guys travel for your games or you yes. stay here? Mm -hmm. Okay, you travel where? You sign up for the travel team. Okay, cool, cool. So where, whereabouts do you end up traveling sometimes? Carmel, Fishers, Michigan, uh, about any place you can Cool, play so there's hockey teams all over. That's awesome, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Now one of the things that you always hear about, and always kind of the fun things, hear about the hockey stops. The hockey, huh? Hockey stops. What's that? It's like a, it's like a skate move. Oh. You ever heard about a hockey stop? No. Well, Matthew taught me how to do a hockey stop. Check it out. I don't know out. if you can do it. We'll see. I can do. I did mm. it. So how do you how do you do a hockey stop? You know how to do a hockey stop? Can you teach me? You skate and then take both feet and stop. Yeah. Like just push it. Like push it forward. Nice! All right, let's do that hockey stop one more time. You ready? Let's go. Oh. We're good. We're good. 
Taylor. I did pretty good. You ran into that wall. Is well, your head okay? That, my head's fine. That's a way to stop, right, guys? Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta hit the wall. To stop. Yeah. <laughs> the wall hurts a little bit more a than a regular bit. No. Matthew, how long did it take you to learn to feel comfortable on the ice, like skating and stuff? A few weeks when my brother just carried me around the ice and just lifted me off the ice and I finally did it. Cool, so it's cool. not a big daunting, scary thing to learn how to skate. You can go out there and do it and have fun. And, and what do they say, John? What do they say about hockey? Oh, well, I think it's the best sport for kids, particularly boys. I mean, f going fast, flying around, and you got a stick in your hand. That's right. And what where? Be better? And if they want to fly around with a stick in their hand, where can they check that out? Uh, City of Bloomington Park's website, which is bloomington.in.gov. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for Thank coming you. in talking about Thank one you. of the best sports out there, right, Matthew? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. And you guys stick around because we've got more right here in the zone. In the Friday zone. Friday. Welcome to the Earth Eats Test Kitchen. I'm Heather and today we're making pineapple freezies. And I am Felix. Hi Felix. Hi Heather. Heather, uh, what is a pineapple freezy? Well, it's almost like a slushy or a popsicle, perfect oh. for a hot summer day oh, and it's yeah. made with this. Oh. What it's a pineapple. Oh, Heather, can, can I touch it? You can. Be careful. Ah! It'll poke you. Yeah, that was that was pointy. Ah! Well, inside it's really good. Oh, can, can we can we use that for the for the pineapple for the pineapple freezies? We can. I'm going to use crushed pineapple. It's much easier. Okay. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of crushed pineapple, uh -huh. just a little, okay. and it's okay if some of the juice gets in there. Okay. It's really good. Oh, I bet. Look at that. That looks delicious. It is delicious. And I'm going to put it in here, but be careful. What what, what are you putting it in, I'm Heather? putting this pineapple in this little food processor. Uh -huh. And what is a food processor? It chops it up really small, like you're making ice cream. Ice cream. Oh, I love ice cream. When it's hot outside, I eat tons of ice cream. Well, that's good, because today we're going to make these little, little popsicles. They're really super easy. You just add a little bit of sugar uh -huh. and a little bit of coconut extract. Oh, I love coconut really extract. Really simple. And in a minute, I'm going to make a big noise, and then we'll be done. Okay. Really easy. Should, should I cover my ears? Maybe. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, are you ready? Okay, okay. Okay. That's oh, it. That's it. Oh. And we're that's done. not very loud. Oh, it's not very loud no, at all. No. And you just take a little bit, and you put it in this ice cube tray. Oh. Really easy. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then where do we put the ice cube tray? Well, after you've put just one spoonful of pineapple in each, each little space, uh -huh. you're going to put it in the freezer. <gasps> the freezer. And yeah. that's how we make the ice cube freezy. It's so easy. And it doesn't take very long. And after it's frozen for just a little while, you're going to put these little popsicle sticks in there. Okay. Like this. <gasps> Look at that. And that's it. And you can eat it like a popsicle. You can, and I've got some right now. <gasps> can we, Heather, can we try some? You can. Ah. I'm really excited for these. Well, I'm glad. <gasps> I have plenty for you and for, for me. Thank you, Heather. And look, these are star-shaped. <gasps> I love stars. Yeah, they're fun. They're yeah. really fun in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone. Here's that recipe again. <gasps> You can write it down oh, or go to our website and watch Earth Eats right on your computer. Yeah, eating smart is more than easy. It's super simple. Hi, it's me, Bub. I want to try. I say, Darn. Not pull. Who's there? Lettuce. Lettuce who? Lettuce in. It's freezing out here. <laughs> in the Friday zone, Friday. Welcome back, guys. You know, on a cold night, nothing keeps you warm like a furry friend. So we now welcome Sue Ann from the Brown County Humane Society, who's here to share some adoptable pets with us. Sue Ann, who do we have first? 
We have Pippin. Pippin. Yes, Pippin is a black and white oh, kitty. My goodness. He is absolutely Hi, wonderful. Very, very friendly, very yes. cuddly. Very cuddly. Yes. Okay, and Look how old is Pippin? Three years old. Okay, awesome. Pippin, it's so nice to meet you. So cute. A little starstruck on TV here. And who do we have next? We have Hannah. Hannah. Hannah is our only doggy. Calvin's going to bring Hannah out. Come on, Hannah. Come you on, Hannah. Hannah. Come here, girl. Oh. There you go. Hannah is an American Bulldog. Oh, and how old is Hannah? Hannah is one year old. Oh, so mm -hmm. sweet. Now, um, what do you think makes Hannah a perfect adoptable pet? Well, she absolutely loves people. She loves children. And she's just, just so friendly. Beautiful eyes as well. And who do we have next? We have Nutmeg. Nutmeg. Oh my God. Nutmeg. <laughs> Oh my goodness, now what, what type of cat is Nutmeg? I think I had a cat this type. What type is it? Nutmeg is a brown tabby. Brown tabby. And, and he is also a domestic short hair kitty. Uh huh. Oh He's goodness. three years old. He actually came in with Pippin. Oh, okay. he was surrendered. Him? Yes, together. What does that mean, surrendered? Surrender means that an owner can no longer care for them oh, in some okay. cases, so they bring them into the Humane Society mm -hmm. for oh. uh, adoption. Okay. So yes. sweet. And so you were saying that you are a foster parent earlier? Is that I right? am. And so what does that mean? Well, sometimes we have doggies and kitties that need special care. Uh -huh. So we have folks that actually uh, bring them into their homes and they care for them until that until they're ready for adoption. Oh, cool. Oh, that's so what a great sweet. Thing. Well, if you guys want to do something like that or adopt a pet, you can go to bchumane.org, or if you don't live in Brown County, you can go to petfinder.com and find a pet of your own. Well, we got some kids out in the audience. Yeah. Let's have them come meet some of these pets. Come on out, guys. Oh, my goodness. But remember to live, Anna. learn, and play the Friday's own way. We'll see you guys here next week. Oh, here you go. Oh, oh you. She's nice. Wonderful job. Oh, this is good. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by Southern Indiana Pediatrics, part of IU Health Southern Indiana Physicians. For decades, parents in our community have trusted their children's care to Southern Indiana Pediatrics. Learn more at siphysicians.org. The Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you. <laughs>